Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Tonight's episode will be about the organization behind the Ninth Age. I've spoken before about the history of it, but today I would like to focus on what it is today, and extra focus on the organization behind it. This is something that has changed quite a lot over the years, with several restructurings, and I think that people don't have that much insight into it anymore. Uh, not that much, much interest, perhaps. So I figured I, I would talk a little b- about it to keep you informed, basically. Um, to do this, I've had to do some research into it, so I've learned a bit myself as well. So that's that's nice. I will also maybe touch upon some other top- topics towards the end of the show. We will see. Um, but before we get get on to the main topic, we have some smaller segments. First is the hobby spotlight. So, on my desk tonight, I am continuing with my vermin. I'm working on the uh, on s- sketching uh, five of the triari from Dragon Claw miniatures. So these are armored little rats with spears originally, but I've converted them to have halberds instead. And I will be using them as vermin guard eventually in my army. Uh, so I'll post up a picture, you can see what they are, what they look like right now. And then I will follow up on the, on the process uh, throughout the show. I think I will m- focus very much on sketching uh, while I paint. I find that it's a very convenient thing to do. Uh, the coloring part demands a little bit more attention, and uh, so it 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 gets gets harder to talk at the same time and do a good job. Um, hopefully, that is something that will improve with with, with practice, so I can do more advanced things while talking in the future. Um, so I will mo- mostly do sketching while talking. Um, something that I noticed what w- was that the painting part is, is fine. Uh, you can paint with any color, any technique and still talk. But when uh, I'm coloring and doing real, real painting, so to speak, uh, you have to change bottles and uh, wash the bras- brush a lot more often and that that uh, breaks focus. So I focus on sketching. Um, for news, uh, it is as I suspected last uh, the week before the last episode was a very active week. Uh, but we have some some things for this wi- week as well. Uh, we got an, a new supporting company set up and the uh, voiced its support of the Ninth Age. This time it's the Tabletop Playground. And they don't do miniatures or anything like that. What they do is they provide a a virtual reality playground basically where you can play games. Uh, It's not adjusted for the Ninth Age, but you can design your design your own games in this playground. So someone could, st- could step in and, and make all that you need for to play a game of Ninth Age in, in their virtual reality. So that seems really, really cool, I think. Um, maybe it's something that can, can replace um, universal battles in the future, or offer an alternative, a mo- more inver- uh, immersive alt- alternative. They have a small little trailer uh, that they posted uh, that I will link down below. You, you should go check it out. It's, it looks quite neat. On the Kickstarter side of things, um, I can follow up follow up on the Crack on Games Kickstarter for Evil Eye Clan that I mentioned last time. 
Uh, they are fully funded and only a few days uh, to go. I think something about 48 eight hours by the, by the time I, I'm posting this. So if you want any of those, go and check it out and support them. Um, we also have the Lost Swords miniatures and their Kickstarter for Undead Minis. It is also succe successfully funded. Uh, I think there, there was se several days to go, so if you if you want any of that, you got, got time to make up your mind. Uh, but they're they are doing fine. Uh, however, the third Kickstarter uh, from Jedharo, uh, Jedharo mo Models has unfortunately been cancelled. I don't think it's anything to do with lack of backing or such, such th things. They just felt that they needed to go back and make sure they had everything in order uh, before continu continuing with the uh, Kickstarter. So hopefully they will be back. They had some really nice models. I, <laughs> I'm not planning to start an, a dwarf army myself, but uh, it would be nice to face those at a tourna tournament or something like that. So check those out, out if you want to. Links are down below. Um, I'll also mention that Shield Wolf Miniatures are continuing their release of uh, terrain. Last they released some uh, city terrain for uh, Talar Talarium, I think they call it. This time it's uh, Krumval, so it's a more of a village type of feel. Um, with uh, some neat stuff. There's a watchtower that's built inside uh, or on top of a tree that looks really neat. I'm a bit tempted to get some other terrain myself, but I don't really need it. I have quite a lot of terrain, so we'll see. But check that out if you want to. Um, that's it for news, I think. Uh, but before we get on to the main topic, I would also like to do a quick follow-up on the last topic, the quick starter. Because I posted a thread on the forum to uh, share my thoughts that I shared with you, also uh, to the staff, and got some response from the creators of the Quickstarter, and um, had a, we had a good discussion. You can check it out on the forum. I will provide a link down below. Um, but I can tell you that I got a good answer on the. Uh, uh, strangeness, strangeness with the character rules. Uh, basically, the reason why you replace models instead of moving models to the back is to make it easier for um, people playing with cardboard cutouts for each unit. Uh, then you have a cutout for the character that you place in the unit and then you place it just on top of um, the, the cardboard cutout for the, for the unit, but if it's a sing single file, you pla place it on either side of the cardboard cutout. So I thought that made, made sense. Um, they weren't that keen on my idea to move uh, the model rules into uh, the basic rules, uh, thinking it would uh, be too complex and uh, make the the advanced tools a bit pointless because it wouldn't be that much of a dif difference. And I can see the ar argument, um, but I hope I got some traction at least to try and make the unit profiles of the um, basic rules just a little bit more similar to those of the advanced tools. Uh, things like switch stride on on uh, cavalry and stomp on large models I think would be a really good addition because those are so so iconic rules for those type of units. Uh, yeah, so um, it was a good, dis good discussion. So moving on to the main topic, the Ninth Age organization. 
on their site uh, they have a on the ninth, the ninth age site they have a tab called about us which strangely lead to leads to a site where the heading says donations um, and of course the ninth age does need donations I'm not faulting them for that they need it for server costs and such things uh, but I feel it's a bit weird to get transferred to that site to that heading when you click about us but there's also a list of useful links with um, more or less <coughs> useful information uh, sadly quite a lot of it is outdated but I guess that's understandable um, keeping tho that kind of things up to date is it's quite a lot, a lot of work and it really is quite thankless work <coughs> so I understand they have trouble uh, keeping it up to date <coughs> um, among other things you can find a an article called a guided tour to uh, the ninth age factory and offices and it's a two-part article and there you'll find a an old organization chart um, it was old when the art article was written so they compare it to a bit more modern um, bit, bit newer structure and talk a bit about uh, the ninth age yeah. it's a decent art article uh, but as I said a bit outdated um, that old organization chart <coughs> it's quite neat to look at it's um, it's a sprawling mess really they call it a snakes and ladder game in that article which is quite fitting um, so a it's a it's a very sprawling, uh, and I I think it illustrates why why they restructured so many times because something that large and complex it it can't really function well I think. So they seem to fight it a few times since then. <coughs> um, but um, finding how the new structure is made up or, or <coughs> the new organization is structured rather um, was a bit chal challenging uh, there wasn't anything more useful on the about us page um, I did find a thread or several thread thre threads with updates from the different teams the last one was from January this year uh, those were quite useful they talked about the different teams and what <coughs> they had been up to uh, since the last update I think they were bi-monthly updates um, but again a bit old uh, you can also click on your avatar in the top right corner and find your way to user groups where you can apply for membership for diff different groups and there you will also find a short summary of each and every group um, sadly not all the groups are there uh, some groups you can't apply for membership so those are not represented and again I think it's a little bit outdated but then by coincidence more or less I was doing some other things I found uh, the members tab uh, which is not on the front page directly you have to click on the little list icon next to news I think um, and you can get some more tabs and there you <coughs> you will find members and here you can find all the members of this organization listed it's very useful to uh, if you want to track someone down um, but hiding in plain sight at the front start of the page is also a fairly new organization chart um, oops, sorry 
it is still not fully up to date, uh, but I think it's the best we have. So I, I will go through this chart and talk a little bit about the different teams and my experience with them. I'm mostly working from memory, so I might get everything wrong, but um, hopefully it's, it, it can be of some use. Or, well, hopefully it can at least be some sort of noise for you while painting. So, <clears throat> at the top we have the manage management team, or the management group. There are basically three groups that all the teams are grouped into. Uh, the management, the production and the hobby hub. So the first is the management. Uh, here we have the execu executive board, who I think are uh, the top, the very, very top of the organization. They decide on the direction of the whole project. <coughs> and I, I think it's been said that they are um, in place to uh, to make the vision of the founders uh, become reality, basically, in, in more poetic terms. I'm not sure how true that is today. Uh, the founders, I think some of them are still in the project. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. We also have the advisory board, who basically gives advice to the executive executive board, I think. So it should be a, a little bit larger team um, to <coughs> collect all the interests of the of the project. Uh, then we have the team heads, uh, which I guess is just the heads of all the different teams are represented. Um, available to the executive, bo executive board to make sure they make good decisions. Uh, oh, this is... Hmm, that's a shame about, about this cult actually. There's a big, big damage in his arm. Hmm, I hadn't noticed that before. Moving on. <coughs> we have human resources, which I guess just a point, or just, that's unfair. Uh, the, uh, um, yeah, they do what re human resources do in any organization, make sure that um, every task has the right people and that's th that those things. Uh, I think Night Age is understaffed in this area, so if you're up for it, um, I think you can apply for this team. Um, then we have the legal team. And I think the legal team is at once uh, both the most hated team of the project and the most important team. As I mentioned in the history episode, um, there was a large update, I think it was 1.2 <coughs> or 1.3, that made the, the Ninth Age into more of a game in itself. And this was Largely, be largely because of the uh, <coughs> the legal team, they decided that the game needed to be more of a game game of its own. Had to stand on, on its own two leg. Couldn't use <coughs> the IP of the intellectual intellectual property of any other company. Um, so the project had to change a bit, um, and some people didn't like this, but it was necessary. Um, <coughs> it, it really is an impressive job that uh, the legal team does. <coughs> and <laughs> they can't really defend themselves that much and their decisions. They have uh, they, they try to and they, they do a good job, all things considered. Um, but since it's <coughs> about legal stuff, they can't be too open about it because that might harm the project. I'm not, l I'm not a lawyer, so I'm I shouldn't talk too much about these, these things. But uh, they seem to know what they're doing. Um, and I think, I think it's really, really important for the project that we 
<coughs> have a good basis to stand on, on a legal solid ground. So that's good. Uh, the last part of the management is are the administrators. And I guess these are uh, the ones responsible for the for uh, forums and the website, making sure everything runs smoothly. So super important. I think <coughs> Tiny is the uh, the gu guru here, um, who's been a massive help to the project. So many thanks to him and his work. <coughs> okay, moving on to the uh, production group. Here we have the world builders, um, which is made up of the background team, who are the ones developing the background for the Ninth Age, and also uh, writing, writing the texts that uh, are presented to the community. Um, a lot of controversy about the background, a lot of different opinions, I won't go into it that much now. Or <coughs> I won't go into it at all now, I think. We, we will move on to the art team instead, who are the ones uh, providing the art for the full army books, or legendary army books as they are called now. Um, they of course do a massive job um, providing the, their talents to the project for no compensation at all. Uh, they get exposure, and I guess that's good for freelance artists. But it's but still, <coughs> creating those awesome pieces and just, gi just giving them to us is um, yeah, it's awesome and very much appreciated. <coughs> so. Uh, the ne next team is a big one. It's the uh, okay. There's some sub subgroups here, I guess. Uh, so next we have the design and balance teams. <coughs> I need to have a sip of water. <coughs> yeah, that's better. Okay, the the design and balance teams. Who uh, uh, draft and update the rule set, set, as it says here. And at the top of that, we have the rules team, uh, which I would say is the um, the uh, the, uh, the the team responsible for all the rules. Basically, uh, they have final say in all the designs. Um, there's also rules team advisors. I don't know if that's a thing anymore. Maybe, uh, but I guess that's yes more of, of the same thing. But uh, uh, without the, uh, they can give uh, input, but not uh, actually be part of the decisions. I guess uh, so. A, lo a larger team to bring out in more ideas and point of views. Um, <coughs> we have con conceptual design. Or conceptual design support even. I don't know if these are a thing anymore, uh, but I think they uh, were the ones who took the background provided by the background team and interpreted it into concepts that the uh, th that were used when designing the armies. So. Um, which brings us to the army design team, uh, who took those those concepts and uh, uh, turned them into rules. And then the rules team could decide if uh, those rules were good enough, or balanced enough, or oh, all that. Too. Um, next, we have the balanced team, and this is—I'm fairly sure that they, this is not a thing anymore. So, um, in the older process, uh, you had a team. I was part of the um, Vampire Covenant team in the uh, early stages of Ninth Age. Uh, and in each team there were different several members. Um, and I think also in each team a representative of the rules team. And to, together they 
discussed and came up with uh, different designs for everything in the book. And this was uh, shipped to the rules team for them to make a decision. And uh, they could approve it or they could send it back, in which case you had to change th some things. Uh, sometimes they uh, gave some feedback on what they thought was wrong, so you could improve it and send it back again. Uh, and once the uh, rules team had approv approved a design of a unit or an item or anything like that, it was sent to the balance team for uh, them to put a cost on it. Um, and this was not ideal, I think. Uh, there were some problems with uh, animosity <laughs> between the teams. Uh, you can could feel very, very annoyed at the uh, uh, balancing team or the rules team when they didn't do as you thought. Uh, and it also created some weird designs, I think, uh, because it created an incentive for a sort of min-maxing design, where you you bargained with the uh, ba balancing team. If we, if we take this out, how much can we reduce the cost? Basically, um, as a concrete example, remember the uh, cadaver wagon of the Vampire Covenant. We had designed the rules, uh, and thought it was cool, nice rules, and sent it for costing at the balancing team, and it came back a lot more expensive than we have had thought. So in a bargaining process we stripped other things from, from the cart to try and make it cheaper. And I think it was in that process that it lost uh, its uh, D6 impact hits and only has one impact hit instead. And sure that it's not large as chariot so maybe it makes sense. <coughs> but it felt a bit weird. Uh, I think it's the same reason that the Dark Coach lost Terror. Uh, which I th feel is weird um, because the altar of death has terror but not the dark coach and <coughs> I feel that the dark coach should be scarier but whatever so the balancing team is no more and I think I think at least and instead the the costing is mostly made by the rules team but I think also the armor design team has quite a lot of, a lot of say in it <coughs> So I think that's good. Um, and then we, in the design and balance teams, we also have the play tester team, who, uh, yeah, it does what it says on the on the, on the tin. Um, they play play test the new, new designs and the rules, and give early fee feedback and uh, on how on how it works. <coughs> so a really important team. Next we have the review teams, correcting errors, clarifying and uh, formatting the books. I was part of the uh, rules review team, that's on top here. Uh, there's no uh, hierarchy here, I think. Uh, no, there isn't in this group. Uh, <coughs> and the rules review, the uh, task was to make sure that the rules were written in an, in a way that people could understand and it was written e efficiently. Uh, there were no holes in the rules and all of that. Um, <coughs> we will, were later merged with the uh, rules support, I think they were, they were called. Uh, and. Uh, are called rules clarity now instead, but uh, the the task is still the same. We get um, when when people ask questions on the forums about <coughs> how a, a rule works. Uh, we are the ones who who uh, answer that basically, um, and if we find that a question cannot, cannot be answered, or if the answer is a bit unclear, the rule can be brought up to 
be evaluated if it needs to be further clarified and change it, changed in the rules at least that that's how it was <coughs> now it's not changed in in, in the ru main rule book anymore instead of this rata and uh, fre frequently asked questions <coughs> um, so that's rules review uh, we also have the lecturing team who make sure that it is uh, written in proper English uh, quite an important team because a lot of the members of different teams are uh, don't have <coughs> English as their first language me included if you can't if you couldn't tell <laughs> um, so very helpful there's also the, the layout team who does the lay layout for the books um, I think this team is one of the most uh, short-staffed at the moment um, it's a pretty thankless job I think uh, you take it for gr granted that it's that ev everything has a good layout um, you only notice it when it's not good um, but really important job <coughs> so that's the whole production group which I guess brings us to the last group the hobby hub I don't know if these groups are really a thing anymore but I, I use this chart anyway so in the hobby hub we have uh, game feedback teams who uh, gather and report uh, the community's ideas to the other teams uh, so we have rules team support I think <coughs> maybe that was the team that was m merged with ru rules review to create rules cl clarity uh, but I can't really remember we also have uh, army community support which uh, which has at least one member for every faction who uh, sample the thoughts of the community of their their own community <coughs> and present it to the other teams for evaluation and i think the idea is that everything is evaluated every suggestion that is put for forward on the forums but of course not everything can be Im implemented that would be insane there's also <coughs> data analyst uh, who is, I assume take data from tournaments and uh, compile it to uh, be understandable and easy to read for others which can then be, then be used to influence design what needs to be nerfed <coughs> figure out what, what's need to be nerfed and what needs to be buffed um, yeah. we also have player scene support uh, with the tournament support and tool support and special task teams I don't know how much of this is active anymore uh, tournament support maybe who provide help to the TOs to or organize tournaments tournaments under under the ninth age <coughs> but really organizing tournaments under the, the ninth age is quite simple in my opinion at least very straightforward um, with no need to comp anything and such <coughs> but anyway um, moving on to hobby support we have the hobby animation team um, or hat as I believe it, it was called um, I don't know how much of a thing they are anymo anymore um, but I guess their task was or is um, to engage the community um, keep them happy with uh, interesting th things basically <coughs> you have product, su product search who um, 
uh, I think they handle the the lexicon articles about different miniature companies uh, and uh, what miniatures are, are available for each fac each faction. So important important job. Uh, those <coughs> uh, libraries of miniature ca miniatures can be really useful when you want to start an army. I know I've scrolled them through them a bunch of times for my vermin swarm. I found a few stuff that I really really like. Um, they are in constant need of updating, of course, because there are so many min miniature companies today. So it's an endless task. Uh, we also have public relations, uh, who yeah they do what it says on the on the can, and. Uh, <coughs> the content team, which I am now a member of, um, by creating a blog on the, where well, I needed to become a member to create a blog on the site, so I could share this uh, channel uh, with the MyTage community. So what they do is they they create content on YouTube and other other sites and share it with the community. Um, <coughs> there's the national com communities with um, translation teams and the Uni United Nations. So these, these teams pr provide the game in all kinds of different langu languages. I don't have, I don't keep track of what the langu languages we have updated. Uh, in but it's I think it's quite a lot. Um, also, we have <coughs> the last team, the website support with the local mod moderators um, who keep the forum nice and tidy. They are doing a great job, I think. Some don't, but. Um, yeah, I think they're doing a good, uh, a good job at keeping the discussion civil and all that. Uh, there's also the le lexicon team, who I think their main task was creating the lexicon with um, um, this uh, mouse over text on the forum that gave you short e explanation e explanations of different terms and such. So quite useful, but <coughs> Again, an en endless task that is probably quite thankless. So I don't think they are that active anymore. Um, but that that about about does it for the the organization chart. Next, I want to talk about the lab process. That is the legendary army book process. Um, which uh, of which the project has already already produced two the warrior warriors of the dark gods and then also the the daemon legions um, but there are still many to go um, so the process was was improved upon to try and make it uh, quicker um, I myself haven't uh, been part of this process, so I don't have perfect insight. But uh, I was part of the uh, process for making the slim version of the uh, Vampire Covenant army book back in the days. Um, and I imagine that the process was fairly similar uh, to the process for the first two uh, legendary ar army books. Um, so I mentioned um, that process a little before. You um, made your design and you took them to the rules team and you got them approved and then you got the cost from the balancing team and um, it was quite slow and it created some friction between the teams uh, could create some uh, strange designs due to min-maxing and all of that bad stuff. Um, <coughs> 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 
the uh, it it also created a situ situation where you uh, often blamed the team above you. So if the community complained you um, um, about a, a design, you just blame the rules team for not having approved the design you wanted that uh, you think would have been better. Um, and that really wasn't helpful. But we all did it, me included. Um, and it it didn't look good and it um, it was it gave a, a lot of unnecessary hate towards the rules team I think because they couldn't very well just approve everything single design that's not healthy either so it, it was a, was a tough situation <coughs> so the executive board decided to um, create a team to redesign the structure um, and they took people who had experience working with that <coughs> sort of things from real life and I think they worked for um, nine months to come up with a new structure and that is the structure that will be used for future books starting with the Infernal Dwarves um, and I found uh, a post on the th forums about, about this new stru structure, which is what I base my uh, discussion here on. But the post is on the internal forums. Um, I think it's okay for, uh, for me to talk about it, but you never know. Uh, the Ninth Age Enforcer Squad might come knocking at my door any minute after I post this. So if you don't hear from me again, you know why. Uh, it can't even possibly be that I uh, lost motivation and stopped <coughs> doing w videos and such. You know, it's the enforcers. Uh, so the new uh, process will create um, fab teams, uh, which stands for fantasy army book team. They do have, have a way with names, um, which will take members from different teams around the project, background team, rules team, um, army design team, and such. And they will all work on the book together with equal uh, voting rights and equal responsibility for the finished product uh, cover to cover. Uh, there also won't be any team with uh, veto rights uh, so hopefully this will um, make the pro process a bit quicker and uh, feel that everyone ma make everyone motivated also I think. Um, <coughs> the fab teams will, al will also work in different stages, I think three in total, um, and when one book moves on to stage two, an another book moves on, <coughs> starts, an an another process starts for, an for another book, and starting with stage one. So there will always be several books in different stages of pr production. Um, there will also be a group of project managers who uh, coordinates all the teams and make sure that um, they all have an appropriate amount of work, no one is overworked and all that. So hopefully this will all mean a lot faster um, production so that we can all get awesome new books for our armies with art and such. Um, I've heard that uh, the ambition is to release uh, four army books every year and uh, 
if they can do that, I think um, we're in a, a really good spot. Even two or three per year, I would be really happy with. So I'm li I'm looking forward to what the future holds. I hope you are as well. But um, I think I will wrap this one up now because my voice is still failing me. I had <coughs> maybe uh, I had some idea to, to talk about some smaller topics as well, but uh, that's that will have to wait for another show. This is it for now. So thank you for listening, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. <laughs>